year what is going on everybody we bike we bike we bike this is your host rob back with another episode of from my experience podcast i hope that all of my wonderful listeners out there have been doing well things have been going well been really really busy got a couple things in the works behind the scenes i got a kick in the pants from jessica what's going on jessica hello everyone hi rob we were going (laughs) it's going good we were recording the other day and she gave me a kick in the pants that i needed and i got a couple things done um so i I feel really good about that um but how are you doing jessica i am good uh productive what is it monday uh so everything's good life is good i have reset today so i am ready i'm excited about this episode i think it's gonna be fun (laughs) Man, listen, you know, life works funny that way, man. You just never know who you're going to bump into, who you're going to run into. You never know who your friends are going to introduce you to that could change everything for you and just give you a shining moment. And I feel like this is a shining moment for the podcast because of our special, special guest. Uh, I need to give y'all a warning. Those of you who are new listeners, you're going to want to turn the volume down a little bit because I'm going to be laughing a lot. If you've never heard my laugh, <laughs> it's highly, <laughs> it's distinguishable it and is. it's really loud <laughs> and I'm not going to edit it in post-production because I don't feel like it. So <laughs> without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, we have, <laughs> We have a very, very special guest. I have to give a shout out to my boy, Nick. Nick, thank you so much. That's my Xbox buddy. He's been on two episodes of the podcast as well. I had to shout him out for putting this together. But um, our special guest, ladies and gentlemen, has worked on the shows Everybody Hates Chris from the CW, The Bernie Mac Show on Fox, and Talk to Me on ABC. He's also been featured on Jamie Foxx's Laugh of Palooza, Comedy Central's Premium Blend, Byron Allen's Comics Unleashed, and the classic BET Comic View. And hopefully, we are gonna pray, hopefully coming to Netflix soon, he's also working on The Upshaws, and that is starring Mike Epps and Wanda Sykes. Ladies and gentlemen, we have comedian extraordinaire, Mike Estime. Yeah. Yeah, Hashtag the black man. How much I've done. Thank you. Thank you. I I feel like I've actually done something. Appreciate y'all. That's you have. (laughs) Yes, indeed. Thank you so much. Thank you, Rob. Thank you, Jessica, for having me on. Appreciate it. Uh, Thank you for having me. I I want everyone at home, you know, most of our audience is black and they know everything I just named. Like I used to be, I was buying the Jamie Foxx Laugh of Palooza DVDs and watching that stuff. So that like, when I was looking over your stuff, I was like, oh man, <laughs> like yeah. you, you have yeah. achieved some things, man. Those, those are no small feats and you're still going. Um, and That's we it. appreciate you and the work that you do. You know, like bringing laughter to the world is highly important, especially now. Oh, most definitely, most definitely. It's, uh, I mean, as hard as it may be, uh, that is the way uh, I keep myself mentally stable. Uh, that I, I mean, I can't really pay for therapy sessions, so I just I go and just rant and talk crazy, and people laugh and they actually pay me for that. And I'm like, oh, they're gonna pay me for my crazy? Okay, here we go. <laughs> like here, here we go. Okay. <laughs> so we understand each other because I'm trying to so get paid for my well, podcast. Uh, you know what we do? Yeah. <laughs> So I, we have a we have a kismet about ourselves. We have a nice little rapport. So I I look at it as laughter is not only it's like music. It can bring people together. It can be like yes. really show each other's differences, but at the same time show each other's likenesses and how we can laugh at those things. So that's what I try to do, you know. And you know, every now and then you'll piss people off, but okay. you know that's how life is. You know, it's like social media. You're not gonna place it, please. You know, please everybody. You can't please everybody. No, so I don't try. Question for you: Where did your journey in comedy begin? Oh man, uh, we we going there, huh, Rob? We man, <laughs> where did it we start? Man? Did I mean, start? I okay. can't read all those achievements and accomplishments and not let the people know where you started. Uh, okay, all right. Well, I started as a sharecropper back in that. No, let me. See. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> During our songs, when he we sang our big old spirituals. Oh, my God. 
Oh, oh Overseer <laughs> said, you's a funny nigga. No, no. Um, <laughs> you's a funny. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I don't know if I'm going to make it through this episode. <laughs> It started, it started, no, seriously, it started, um, I would say the earliest memory I had when I knew I wanted to do this was when I was 16 years old, a junior in high school. Mm. And, uh, cause I know I was goofy, cause first I wanted, I love sports. I love sports. I wanted to play football, but I was too light in the ass. When you're 85 pounds, a senior in high school, you're really not. Damn. I, yeah, I know. And I had a flat top too. So I look like a damn pencil. So, <laughs> And, uh, but not even a good number two Ticonderoga pencils. I look right. like one of those broke ass yes, pencils. The, the, not the, yeah, the, the, spread, yeah. the race is not that strong. Yeah. I wasn't even one of the good Ticonderoga, you know, not the Ticonderoga. <laughs> so I started there and I said, okay, sports, but I made people laugh, you know, from either my physical comedy or what I said. And, uh, we had a, a talent show. And from that talent show, um, it was somewhat scripted, but not really. And I just started thinking of things off the top of my head. And people, you know, were laughing. And this time, not at me. Usually, sometimes at me. But this time, they're laughing with me. And what I was saying, and they were just reacting. And and just, it was just a, I mean, I, I couldn't explain it. But it was like a feeling like, this This kind of feels right. I don't know what the hell is going on. I'm, I was too young. It was like, you know, to get a little graphic, it's like, you know, when I first saw a girl and then something happened down in my pants, like, what's going on? This <laughs> kind of feels right. I don't know why I like it, but um, this feels kind of good. I don't know what's <laughs> going on down there, but uh, you, can, you lead the way. You lead the way. No, you lead the way. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. audience, don't ever, fellas, don't ever let him lead the way. Uh, yeah, don't ever let you. Yeah, it's yeah. That's that's the reason why I had a child out of wedlock when I was not, not ready. But that's another story for another day. <laughs> that's what happened when you get led the way. You get led astray. When you right. led the way, you get led astray. That I should put that on a slogan on a bumper. You stick. should. You should. Yeah. That's good. Yes. <laughs> Yo, my face so, hurts. <laughs> yes. I, I was not grounded. Uh, yes. Uh, a lot of a lot of laundry was done in my teenage years. I want. I'll stop right there. But um. It was it was that time when I said, man, this feels good. And then people started coming up to me and and they were saying, you are so good. Oh, my God, you should kind of do this. But I was like, I, I don't know. And my and it, it was funny because I didn't ever knew I was really doing some research because Eddie Murphy was my idol. Mm -hmm. Still is. Um, and when I was 10 years old, 10, 11 years old, I saw Eddie Murphy raw. Now, I didn't know what he was saying. Oh, I just wow. saw this. Yeah, Eddie, uh, not Eddie Murphy. I'm sorry, Eddie Murphy Delirious. That was the first one mm -hmm. in the red when he was in the red leather. Yeah, and he was cussing and saying stuff. Now I didn't know what he was talking about. He was talking <laughs> about sex. I never even heard about sex. I never thought about sex. I was just kind. Of, I was just looking at this one black kid and all these people just laughing at him, just laughing at what he was saying. I was like, that's kind of cool. Yeah, and I, and then that's where it kind of started my research and I just kept watching his movies and I just loved his his cadence and the way he just commanded attention and his confidence. And then fast forward back, going back to high school, I felt that. I was like, wow, so this is how it must feel like. And then I went to a senior year where I had my first stand-up and I had um, my first bit was Romeo and Juliet if black people were in it. Oh, shit. And... <laughs> and, and <laughs> And I said, uh, uh, Romeo, Romeo, where are thought Romeo? And then the brother said, here I am, my favorite hoe. And he just <laughs> went from there. And I just started just add something. To, and then, and then uh, I said something, maybe we should show our love by killing each other. I'm like, bitch, you crazy. You know, I was saying <laughs> like that. And people would just. Losing it, and mind you, now this was an all white school, too. Oh, <laughs> oh god, oh my goodness! And I'm throwing this in there, and they were just rolling. I'm like, if I'm that white people, oh my god, you're hilarious, Michael. My god, and all this. And it was, it was, it was just the most gratifying feeling. And then from that point on, I said, okay, this is my calling, this is what I need to do. And my mother, you know, my mother. Haitian Caribbean woman. She's like, you know, you're so funny, baby. You should, you should tell jokes. You make me laugh. I'm like, mom, 
making you laugh and making strangers laugh, that's two different things. Right, right. Because I thought she was biased. But um, I let me had you know I told jokes at family functions and I would imitate relatives here and there and and people would just vibe with it and next thing I know fast forward I'm I'm uh, performing in colleges uh, I'm you know bombing in colleges and yeah. I went to Howard University along with your friend Nikolai mm -hmm. that's how we met and then I started doing this place called uh, Mr Henry which uh, which was in Adams Morgan which was in Washington D C started performing there and it just kept on going and then from that point on went to new york started performing there and that's where i got my first manager slash agent mm. and um when i did this big comedy festival called the montreal comedy festival of new faces and i did that and apparently i did well because uh, i've never had so many white folks rush me and not because i took something from them <laughs> or because I, I fit the description but they rushed me. Oh my God! Come and talk you. Come and you. And I was wow. like overwhelmed, and I got signed by ICM, and that's when, from that point, I got on the show. Talk to me, and then also, uh, also I did um, BET Comic View Live and mm -hmm. things like that, and it just started snowballing. And uh, I've been doing comedy ever since, and that prompted me to move to Los Angeles, Ooh. where I continued it, and you know with. Uh, entertainment, you have your ups and your downs. And when yeah. your ups are up, your downs are down. And I had my down moment. And at that time, it was like really low. And then that's when the Bernie Mac show came about. Uh, wow. And it was just a small role. It was a small role. It was, um, my, my line was under the sink. And because I was some, like some shady character mm -hmm. that, you know, found stuff lying around Bernie's house. And like, man, I was hit. And you know, Bernie like, I hit them damn motherfuckers. <laughs> Cause where the hell you put them cause that motherfucker? Where you put them that? And I said, and all I and all I said was under the sink. You're like, got it. And I booked it that way. And I was like, but, it? and I was like, wow, this acting thing is easy. <laughs> I didn't know. Wow. And, how uh, how and was just that? The snowball. And then I was and I was fortunate enough to get that. And then from that, I parlayed that into a. A nice little role on The Last Holiday with Queen Latifah and El Cool J. Um, and then I parlayed that into, from that, Everybody Hates Chris, which ran for five seasons, which was a, one of the best experiences of my life. You know, people still call me Risky. At first, I didn't, you know, if no one knows, like I said, like you said, a lot of white folks, they didn't see the show. So if they said, they go Risky, I'm like, oh my God, what does he have? So that wasn't a good thing. When he said Risky, that was... They were like, oh my God, should, should I take shots? Should I, should I call the authorities? Oh, you know, that was before the Karens came about. So, uh, Not they, the Karens. Yeah, 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 exactly. Before the Karens came about, I was just risky. But then when the show caught on, a lot of people started really, and it got more popular actually when the show got off as opposed to when it was on. And it's still running now. Um, I know that for sure because I'm getting people from Brazil, hey, danger. But they call me danger. They know how to say risky. Like, I'm like, danger. And I was kind of like, fuck you, you danger. We call you danger. We can't say this. I was like, oh, you meant risky. Like, yeah, danger. I was like, oh, okay. I thought you were cool. I was like, kiss my ass. You danger. But that was great. It was great. And from that point on, um, I've been blessed enough. To you know, Paulie, that like I said, I've had my ups and downs. I've yeah. been able to perform um, overseas for the troops as well early in my career, and that was a great experience. I've been able to perform in my homeland of Haiti for a benefit oh, wow. after the earthquake. That was great. Um, Miami, um, and now, um, thank goodness, uh, like I, you just mentioned, I'm currently now filming uh, the Upshaw starring Mike Epps and Wanda Sykes. Along with Kim Coles, Paige Kennedy, great cast, uh, uh, produced by Regina Hicks, uh, who's done many. If nice. you Google Regina Hicks, you'll just see a slew of things that she show ran or, yes, yes. or uh, wrote for, and now she's the showrunner. And right. yes, what out of all of those experiences, what is which one would be uh, the most memorable or um, iconic for you, like? Which one you never forget? It, you always have this moment that it just pops back up to you. You're at whether it's on stage or a movie, like it just it's like, wow, I'm doing this. 
Yeah, it was um, two things. As far as stand up, it was actually the Montreal Comedy Festival. Mm -hmm. um, that's where I said, okay, this is a different country because it's in Canada. So I was like, okay, I don't know how my. Because uh, a comic wants to make sure that their humor transcends, yes. not just, you know, it, it could transcend boundaries, regardless of color, religion, and race, whatever, that everybody could unify and, and be able to relate to what they're saying. And I think the Montreal Comedy Festival was one of the uh, times where it really popped and clicked for me and said, okay, I belong. And that's where I really said, yeah, this is what I really want to do. And as far as um, my acting, um, it was definitely Everybody Hates Chris because um, you had um, Tashina Arnold, you had Terry Crews before he went crazy. Uh, <laughs> 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 You know, T, I love TC, but come on, T. I mean, damn. I'm going to take the damn phone away from him. I mean, don't even eat it. I mean, shit. I mean, this is to take the damn phone yeah, away. Phone yeah. away from, I mean, I guess him and Trump taking the hydroxychloroquine together. I mean, they talking crazy. <laughs> um, But Terry Crews, Tashina Arnold, uh, of course, Chris Rock came and directed some. Um, Tony Rock, J.B. Smooth was on the show. Yeah. Um, um, we had legends like Jack A. Harry, Ernest Thomas. Mm -hmm. I mean, we had people, and then and I was just so nervous. Right. Uh, and Debbie Allen one time directed one. I was just you know jittery. I was like, oh, what if I say the line wrong? What if I do this? But and then after a while, and Debbie Allen was like, calm down, just do what you've been doing. Debbie I, Allen, yes. Yes. <laughs> yes she's, oh, she's amazing. Another Howard alumnus, by yes. the way, when Howard. And she said, do what you're doing. And I think it really hit me when one of the, the director before Debbie, um, he's, done, he's done a lot of things. Like, he did the Bernie Mac show. He did the Wonder Years. He can go way back. And, I, and my, my role was supposed to be just a guest star, and it became a recurrent. And he goes, you're going to be back. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times they said that in Hollywood. We'd be like, yeah, okay, whatever. All right, whatever, motherfucker. Right. Then I've, I've heard this before. <laughs> I've heard this, motherfucker. Okay. It's like, you know, I, I was like going back to high school. and goes, oh, yes, I'll call you. And she never <laughs> called. I'm sitting there. I call up the name. Boo -doo -doo, this number has been disconnected. <laughs> Hello? That's exactly the sound. Yeah. I'm like, I'm like, Boo -doo -doo, this number is no longer in service. You try your call again. I'm like, damn. Damn. I didn't know she oh, worked at the phone company. God dang. Look, she got oh, she worked at the phone company. company. Okay, maybe I got to try some. <laughs> so. You know, when they tell you it's going to be all right, you think it's the Hollywood, same, the, ho the same Hollywood, you know, spin that they did. But lo and behold, I was back. And, um, you know, and uh, that was one of the highlights thus far of my career. And now the biggest highlight is Upshaws, which I'm going to do. And then hopefully because uh, we had to stop filming because of the pandemic. Mm -hmm. But we're now back in production. We had our table read. And like I said, we have Mike Epps. We got Paige Kenny. Kim Coles is I mean, uh, I'm Kim. Uh, Kim it's a, yeah, Kim Coles? No, not Kim Coles. Kim Fields. Why well, I said Kim Coles? Kim Fields. I'm getting confused with two black girls. Kim <laughs> Fields. If no one's doing <laughs> that's your, that's wrong. That's wrong. I've been I've been around these white folks too much. No, I'm just playing. <laughs> <laughs> getting confused with two of my black. Kim Fields. Kim Fields. Not Kim Coles. Kim Coles was on Living Single and Living Color. Yeah. Kim Fields, who was on Facts of Life and Living Single, she is on the show. She plays Mike Epps' wife, and she is amazing. Uh, along with Paige Kennedy, who plays uh, a friend of uh, of Mike Epps' character, Benny. He is amazing. I play one of the mechanics, Tony, uh, who's, who's just there, and we just... It's just a, a great chemistry, a great cast, and now it just keeps getting better and better. And... and Every time, more times, like you know how it is after five years, Rob. The first couple of times, you're like a little hesitant. Okay, what can I say? What can I do? Yep. What can I say? And after you get a rhythm going, it's like, oh, okay, I got it. Right. I figured, listen. <laughs> it's like what you're doing right now. It's listening, reacting, and not trying to be the show, but be part of the show. Because as a comic, Ooh. you always like, I got to make it funny. Dun, 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 dun. And you're trying to be all doing all this crazy stuff. <laughs> but you just settle your mind down. And just do your thing, and just do right. what you feel like you you were born to do and love to do. So, you, you those, me. I mean, that's a long-winded answer, but that's what I just wanted to make sure I was specific. It, so it was Clarity. excellent. It was excellent, man. And you you pointed out 
this is just me. I am no be all end all of anything. Um, and a lot of my friends tell me that I'm quote unquote funny, but I don't try to be funny. And I get that from you. I get that vibe from you that you're just naturally funny. Like if we just had a conversation about anything, you could try not to be funny and I would probably still be crying and laughing. And those are my favorite types of comedians. When it's just conversational, cool, everyday relatable, like I will be on the floor trying to find oxygen. And oh. <laughs> <laughs> because it's it's so funny. But I want to I want to take it back to something you said earlier about your craftsmanship and how you studied. What did studying Eddie Murphy look like? Were you watching it and then trying your own stuff? Like how detailed did you get with that and what are you doing now to continue to study the craft? What I'm doing now with that, with, while studying Eddie, was uh, when I first start, started studying Eddie, I tried to uh, mock him, imitate him, mm -hmm. which is not good because right. when because I, I tried doing the exact same thing because Eddie started doing comedy at 16 years old. He started doing stand up, so I said, "Well, I got to do stand up." But the difference was Eddie was funny. Uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah, that would help. It worked, it works best better when you when you're actually funny and have, actually have jokes. I didn't have no one damn joke. I could only relate stuff to what I was doing with my family members. And the thing about it is like I could do that, but I didn't know how to do a, a proper setup, a proper punchline. And and from imitating Eddie, I said, okay, this is not me because I might have his mannerisms, but I can't I have to find my own voice. Mm. And what Eddie told Chris Rock and what I took to took to my own thinking and to my own craft is Study everybody. Not only Eddie, study everybody. So, and Eddie always talked about Richard Pryor. He said that's who he re that was his his Buddha or his right. God, was Richard Pryor. So I said, okay, let me study Richard Pryor. Richard Pryor's Buddha God was Red Fox. So I said, okay, I gotta study Red Fox. <laughs> so I'm going back. So I'm like, God dang, I hope. I and I'm going back to like, uh, uh, you know, um, uh, Pig Meat Markham and, uh, and Burt Williams. And Jackie Gleason and Woody Allen. So we just kept going on and on because even though I might not find their comedy my taste or quote unquote funny, funny, but I could learn something from them. How to craft a joke, how to write a joke, how to uh, speak to a crowd. Even Dick Gregory, even Dick Gregory was a political comic, which I'm not, mm -hmm. but he had a way of putting it where it didn't make seem like. He was talking over my head. He was talking to me, not through me. Right. You know, that's how. That's why Dave Chappelle, I think, is brilliant because Dave will break stuff down where I don't feel like, like, oh, this motherfucker. I don't know what he's talking about, doing these big ass words. And uh, I'm in the metamorphosis of the strudel. I'm like, I don't have no. What is this nigga talking about? <laughs> talk to me, please. I mean, come on. Is this a is this a TED talk or a comedy show? <laughs> I, I want to make sure I laugh. You know, you yeah. get the joke in. And he does a great job of doing that. So not only his performance style, but his words to other comics, which was just to keep studying. And always, because Chris Rock to the day, to this, to this day, says he keeps studying. Mm. He says he still goes and watches old clips of Woody Allen or or uh, Jackie Mason or, like like I said, Pygmy Markham, I mean, Godfrey Cambridge, read about them, study them, just see even the times that they were living in, especially during the 60s, because that was a turbulent time, to take, like we're doing right now with the pandemic and social injustice, which is not so much different aside from the pandemic, is to take it and to craft it in a way where people are already mad, but try to lighten it up and try to lighten that load. And to enter your, and to, to uh, you know, tie it up in a bow, yeah, I can't be, I have to just be naturally funny. Yeah. I can't be... You know, and on all the time. It's tiring. It's almost like trying to be black in America. It's tiring sometimes. <laughs> right. Can't turn it off. You know, you just got to just turn it down right. like, God dang, you have to go out here again. God, geez. I don't want to always be funny because after a while, it doesn't become authentic. Right. You have to be as natural. And if it comes, it comes. If it doesn't, it doesn't. So you have to want to be as organic as possible and just, you know, let it flow. And uh, those are the people that I like hanging around because as a comic, I don't want to be another, around another comic that always wants to just keep doing joke after joke because I'm like, Get, dude, we're off stage. Can we just can we just have a drink and have a normal conversation? Right. You know? So. Jessica, I saw okay. you writing over there. I thought I thought I, I didn't want to override you. <laughs> no, no. I'm taking it all in. Uh, one of the things that I 
took away is uh, your ability to follow the breadcrumbs, I guess. And like the breadcrumbs, like these nuggets. Um, we kind of talked about that being present and being in, in a while back. And so to hear you say like you you went and you followed uh, Eddie Murphy and then and Eddie Murphy, um, did I get it right? Red Fox. Richard Pryor. Richard Pryor and Red Fox. And, and so Fox, right. um, all of the, and like how you follow that that trail of, I you start out not knowing um, really anything about the structure of comedy, but you know that you're funny and like following that, like for the listeners and viewers, like um, any other piece of advice for people that have these skills and these gifts and like wanting to, um, they they don't have the whole package. <laughs> like right. they right. just have one piece and they know they can identify something within themselves that's special or a gift, but how do they connect that to um to like their to keep going and, and keep going and pursuing that thing without feeling defeated by it well the thing i would say so you don't feel defeated by it is to know your own voice number one because everybody has to find their voice I to, it took me a while to find my voice and sometimes it could someone that is like a quote-unquote prodigy will find it quicker than others um, you can't get defeated because you have to understand that no one, you're never going to have a great set or a great bit or someone has already done it. You just have to find, like I said, find your own voice and make it original to you. Uh, and to always, always look to get a little better. Always look to get a little better. Because once you say, aha, I got it, that's your ass. You don't, you don't <laughs> Why don't you say, aha, I'm the man. Oh, yeah, you done fucked up. You, you, you right. Then, right. <laughs> I've had that. Humble uh, yourself. <laughs> yeah, then you're playing yourself, and all of a sudden you're patting yourself on the back, you're breaking your arm, and that's when you messed up, because I had that aha moment where I thought I was the shit, and I went to the, actually, my it was my third year in comedy, and I went to the Apollo Woo! in New York. Oh, yeah. I went to the Apollo, because I did great uh, in D.C., because what you had was a show in DC to get you to the Apollo, mm -hmm. the, the mm -hmm. first stage before you even made it to the televised. So, but the, it was just as rough. So I got, I, I destroyed it in Washington. So I'm like, oh shit, oh man, I'm about to rip this. You know, I'm a beast. So I go up in there and I walk out and they say, okay, Mike, you're gonna be the third comic, whatever. I'm like, good, good, let, let me go, let me go. I'm joking <laughs> in the back. I got all this confidence and I'm ready. I'm just hyped. Now, when I walk out, you know, the the old Apollo, you got to touch the law. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? Yes. Ran, yes. Yeah, you got to rub the law for good luck. I just went out there, didn't even touch the law. Oh, and shit. Oh, oh yeah. Oh. Oh, you see where it's going. <laughs> and then everybody's like, oh. You know, when someone says some shit about you in school, right. ooh, that's what it was yeah. like. Oh. And then, you know, that that old ass lady with the bad weave or wig in the front, she was yeah. there. I'm like, bitch, what the hell are you doing here? Don't you supposed to be on television? But I guess she's there all the time. Right. So I, I didn't touch the, the, the lock. So everybody goes, oh. And then they said, what's your name? And I was like, yo, I'm Mike. I, I did all this bravado. Mike asked me, I'm about to rip it up. Like, all right, Mike, do your thing. So I go out there. What up, Apollo? Yeah. That's Damn. all I got. Everybody just, oh, I'm like, uh oh. I'm like, <clears throat> and then I was doing what you were doing with the mic check. <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> Cobwebs in my throat, like I was gargling dice. I'm, mm, ah, ah. <laughs> and then I said something, and my, mind you, my mother, my father, and my cousin came down to support me Ooh. in ha Harlem. So I'm like, yeah, yeah, wonder. And I don't know what I said. I bladdered something out. Yeah, y'all ladies be tripping, don't you? And all of a sudden, it was like a Harley Davidson boo, like boo, 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 boo. And then the booze just rang down. Boo. I thought I saw my father starting to boo myself. I was like, is that my <laughs> And they booed yeah. the hell out of me. I walked off and I, I never felt it was the loneliest feeling because when you get booed, you have people avoid you like the plague. No one want to talk to you. They don't, <laughs> there was no pot on no back. Hey man, you get him next time. They're like, mm, that a nigga booed right there. No, oh, he got booed. Mm. No, don't touch him. He might get he might hit right. boom, off on you. I don't want that right. back on me. I don't want that energy. So I was just, oh, devastated. 
And then I uh, went to I went outside, and my father, my mother's like, "Baby, it's okay, it's all right. We love you. You did fine." My cousin's like, "It's all right, Mike. You know, you know, you get him next time." My father's like, "Hmm, you need to work on your jokes." I'm like, "God damn." Yeah. <laughs> I, like, I, I didn't think you were that good either. Yeah, you need to work on your jokes. I was like, damn. So after that, I was oh, like, Lord. man. But the thing that I knew what I said, you know what? I still want to do this even after getting boo. Mm -hmm. After getting boo, I still want to get on stage. I was like, am I a masochist? Why am I? I was still thinking about it. I was like, I still, I did this wrong. I was just analyzing what I did wrong. And then I think it took me two weeks to get over it. And then after two weeks, I was back on stage. I was I was scared. I was petrified. I was like, what if this happens again? Yeah. And I don't think my set went that well. It was a little off. It was a little quiet. But I wasn't scared. I, I wasn't afraid of the silence as much. I rushed through it. But then the second time, I got my first little laugh. And then, the, and then it broke. But that's how you know. When you have adversity like that, it hits you. And it doesn't deter you from what you feel like your calling was. Mm. So that's what I would, that's the nugget I would give to folks. Do your research. Um, you're going to get a lot more, there's going to be a lot more downs than ups in the beginning. But when you have those ups, all those, those highs are the best highs. Better than any drug, better than any sex, better, and yes, better than any sex. I never thought I would say that, but it is. <laughs> <laughs> you sure? Because oh. I'm not that. I, oh my God! I like my girl. Like, babe, you want to hold on, girl? I'm gonna write this joke. Mm, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> so my, oh, oh, that was a hell of a punchline, girl. No, you keep that. You know, you you finish yourself off. I'm done. Woo! <laughs> my Lord, that was good. It it, it was. It oh was, man! But yeah, research. Stick with it. Find your voice. Find your voice. What makes you unique? Everybody, you always want to be. Everybody is t uh, hit on a subject that you're probably going to talk about, but make it your own. And like Chappelle is talking about stuff that Dick Gregory was talking about, Richard Pryor was talking about, mm -hmm. Eddie Murphy was talking about, but he made it his own. He made it his own point of view, which is why, you know, a lot of people hit, consider him, I mean, the greatest because yeah. he's doing it in a way where it's just so, like you just said, Rob, natural. Yep. It's not forced. It sometimes don't even feel like he writes it. It looks like he's just a stream of consciousness. Yeah. And right. those are the best comics, you know. And Eddie was like that. Eddie was like a dude that, you know, seemed like he was talking shit on the corner. Like some yep. dudes, I know dudes like that. You know, or Richard Pryor when he's telling his stories. or It's just a, a, an amazing feeling. And uh, as I said to folks, just, just stick with it. You'll know if you want to be a comedian or in this business. you know. You, it's like you, when you find that right person, you know, yeah. you know, you don't know, you can't, you can't describe, but you already know. So that's my nugget. I, we, we definitely appreciate that, man. Um, it's, it's funny. The, the most successful people that I know, um, say some of the same things that you just said, especially the part about finding your voice and what are you going to do differently? Um, what's going to make you different? What's going to make you unique? My, um, my broker, when I used to sell real estate, used to say that to me. He was like, oh, you got a marketing plan? Let me see it. I'm like, yeah, this is going to be. He was like, yeah, the the other 5,000 agents in the area, they doing that. So what makes you in these? What makes you in these? I was like, damn, right? I stayed up all night working on this shit. And you talking about what's <laughs> but he was, yeah. But he was right, though. You know, if a consumer right. is like, what makes this guy different? I mean, other than me being black, what makes me different? Mm -hmm. Um, I think that's important, especially in this age where everyone is booming. Like, people are just selling any and everything. I done seen bottles of water wrapped 500 different ways. But there's always something unique about one that'll make me buy it or just that person. It's just when I when I see that, I don't know, it's like a spark in somebody. Like my, my broker used to also say, um, people buy people before they buy products. So when that authenticity comes through, it's like, hmm, I can connect with that. Um, I do have another question for you, if you don't yes, mind sharing. Um, and since you brought it up as well, talking about some of the lows, and I mean, you don't have to put all your business out there. But I think it's important to talk about the lows because I do believe it's cool to, you know, let people know that it's okay to get out there, start a business, study, do all those positive things. I've been been that person as well. 
But I also don't like to set people up to make them think it's an easy road <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> because yeah. some people really think I could just go out of here and do it. Yeah. Right. Your, your bills are still coming on the first and the fifth. Damn right. Right. But your paycheck <laughs> might not be. Pay themselves. Yeah. So uh-huh. what what were some of uh, some of those lows and what advice do you have for people to help avoid those or prepare for them? Oh, man. Uh, where do I begin? Uh, yeah, I know. That's how that's how low it went. Uh, I'll, I'll start with a simple. Those lows were when I didn't have work, when the phone wasn't ringing, mm-hmm. when you know, it was calling, uh, and I wasn't booking anything. And it it got to a point, and it, it was and it actually was affecting you know my relationship. You know, it was it, it and it does affect your relationship with your lady. If you, you know, with your lady, your man, or uh, have children, it affects it because it affects your mood. Uh, because you're not working, you feel like your value uh, is not being appreciated. Uh, you you want to know why, and then you and then you start getting bitter. Ooh. That's the one thing. Yeah, that was the real low when I started just getting bitter for other people. Like this motherfucker, who what the hell he doing that I can't I can read. He can't even read. Look at his ass. He probably has his dumb ass. Shit. I mean, I was mad at Kevin Hart. Look at his short motherfucker. Eh, 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 eh. I can do that all day long. What the hell is that? Eh, eh, eh. I can do that. Make all one sound. Look at Chris Rock with his fucked up fingers. I can make my fingers look like that. What the hell is that shit about? <laughs> so you got arthritis, so now you're going to be an actor? I mean, I mean, it would be silly shit like that that would just drive me insane to the point of depression. Right. Now, a lot of comics, they are depressed. There are a lot of comics. A friend, a comedian, a comic friend of mine said that the best. We're like broken vases. We have a lot of chips, a lot of cracks in us, and the way we heal ourselves is either through comedy, or writing, or acting. So, it was through those times where I was like, okay, why am I angry? Because I felt like, am I working hard enough? Why is this person doing this? Is my agent not doing this? My manager not doing this? Am I not going out enough? And it's and it's sometimes it's a crapshoot. And you have to be able, you have to be okay with the word no. You have to be okay with the word no. You know, don't have to accept it, but you have to be okay. Okay, no, keep it moving. But you don't accept no. You have to be okay with you're going to be rejected. You have to be okay with they might not like you because I've been saying you're too tall, you're too short, you're too dark, you too, it doesn't do, I mean, I've, I've heard all of it. You know, oh, you're too funnier than this this other than this actor. We can't have you be funnier than him or her. So we can, yeah, I've had that happen too. Like qualified, huh, yeah, so that does exist. Like, uh, I thought that was a good thing, right? <laughs> yeah, like shit. So I can't be funny. So I, you why am funny. I here? <laughs> yeah, why the hell am I here? This that that was in the the breakdown. So you have to be okay with that, but you don't have to accept it, and you do get into that that. Um, depressed mode that mental depression but then you know like and i've started taking therapy because it's good for you aside from comedy because you have to you start have to start talking about things like that is my kids gonna love me yes am i going to be out are they gonna love me any less because i'm not funny because my kids you know they think everything i do is funny even though when i'm not trying to be funny i'm trying to like sit your ass down dad you be crazy come here say that again say that again <laughs> you're gonna beat my ass again, Dad. Say it. Yeah, we're, gonna put, we're gonna post this. No, no, no. I'm really gonna beat your ass. This ain't no joke. <laughs> so it's it, it's great that the kids, for me, I have an outside source. And my, my lady, she keeps me grounded, saying it's okay, it's gonna be all right. So that keeps me grounded. Even and, But before then, it was my mom's, it was uh, some of my com- comedian, fan, com- comedian friends. Um, there's a lot of things you have to you know, pull from, you know, either friends or working out, just find something else that doesn't define just that who you are. Now you break away from it because you need a break every now and then. Right. To just get away and just to reboot, to reset, because you're not always going to be funny. You're not always going to be on. Um, and those are the darkest times I've had. Like, uh, like I said, when I wasn't working, man, and nothing was happening. You know, I was, you know, you know, getting my well, you know, unemployment and people weren't hiring and my manager was calling me like, I don't know what to tell you, Mike. They like you, but they don't but, but you know, all these excuses and I would just just get frustrated and just throw my hands up like this is ridiculous. Um uh what am I doing this for? Um mm-hmm. it's, it's an abusive relationship. The, the the lady's saying she don't want me and my ass like, Are you sure? Are you sure, girl? Uh, I've been working out. 
I've been reading more. I've been, I mean, I cut my hair. You know, I put the skin lighter. Uh, I got, I got a penis enlargement. What's going on? You think I can make it happen? No, it's, it, it's not worth it. Really, it, it is. It just, you have to be happy with yourself and be okay with yourself. That okay, they said no, but that's not the final straw. There's someone out there, you know. And and I, and I, that's why I said I pull from, aside from Eddie, other people like you know Keenan Ivory Wayans. Um, oh yeah. You know, I mean, he they had to go through it. I mean, the first family come all the wins. I mean, I might not be big fans of the comedy, but what he did to bust those doors open, yeah, and say this is what I think is funny to Robert Townsend, the same thing. You know, he did his first movie with overdrafting his credit cards. Mm -hmm. I saw that. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy, but he just believed in it so much, and he had the people around him that believed in it so much. That it pushed him and it became a cult classic. And, uh, you know, those things inspire me and let me know that I'm not alone. Right. And that's one thing you have to realize. You're not alone. It happens. You're not always going to be on. So just have to stick with it. And if you really like anything else, it's a relationship. If you really, really love it, if you really feel like this is what you is meant to be, you will stick and try to make it work as best you can and exhaust every resource you can. You know, as long as you don't hurt yourself and just make yourself crazy, you know, but that's, that's the, that's the lowest I've been. And that's another nugget I would tell people right there. Just, you, it's okay to, to hear no. It's okay that people say no to you, but don't accept it. Mm. Do not accept it. I, nope. I, that resonated. You see, I'm glad that you brought it back up as a nugget because I mentally and like, I, I was holding on to that. So that's a good one. Yes. Don't accept the no. Nope. Never um, accept the no. So back to the the brighter side of things. Um, okay. And, and and doing a little little bit of research. <clears throat> now, <laughs> <laughs> it said that um, in your bio that your views on marriage, sports, and politics will have people in stitches. So I just want to know what some. <laughs> The look on your face is like, oh my yes. god, this shit up. Go yeah, yeah. <laughs> you got me in the starting block, bro. You got me in the starting yeah, block. I, I just want to know. On your mark. <laughs> on your mark. I'm already. I'm, like, I'm not even going to fall start right now. I'm flow joining it's right very now. It's funny. Game both with this bitch. Here we go. Let me lose. Let me lose. Let me yes, lose. Yes. I, I want to hear your thoughts on on uh, <laughs> on marriage in particular because I've been doing a lot of research. Newly single. Just did a whole series about men and women and toxicity and all this stuff. What are some of your thoughts on that? And you, you kind of referenced that. Use it as a reference point when you were talking about the lows and, and the work you got to put into it as well. So, Man, when you're trying to balance a career and relationship, uh, you have to definitely have the right partner, bro. Yeah. Because think about it. I mean, thank God Martin had, you know, uh, Coretta and, and Malcolm had Betty. Because you don't want, you know, Malcolm coming home and like, mm, what you been doing, marching, nigga? Mm-hmm. Okay. You don't want to hear that all day. Exactly. Like, oh, come on, man. Baby, I'm trying to find a dream. Yeah, I'm dreaming. You know what a dream is? Dream is food on the table. He, he had the right person behind. Yeah. Uh, it's, it, it, it's, I look at it as more of um, a superpower where mm. it's like your go-to, your Spin if no if for the old heads out there, remember like Popeye the Sailor Man, and he had a spinach. spinach. Yeah, he had a yeah. spinach. Took that spinach, and that oh was God, his God, I'm an old head. Yeah, me yeah, too. Yeah, yeah. Just love yeah, I'm that. an old head too. That's why I, I reference it. I think. You should, I, and if you don't know no Popeye, Google it. Go to Netflix or Cartoon Network. Do what you got to do. But it's a classic. It's it's the Popeye spinach that gives you that boost. Um, it's 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 difficult. It's not it's not easy, brother. It's not easy. It's not easy. I'm not gonna front like it is. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of ups and downs. Um, but like I said before, if you want to make it work, if you are committed to make it work, then you know it's gonna work. But if you're if you know your the lines are the, the stars aren't aligning and and you're you're thinking one way and she's thinking another way, then yeah, then you have to reevaluate because the thing I always tell them is that. You both came as as individuals first. Yeah, you have to think of individuals first, and love be able to love yourself first before you could just spread that love to the other person. So that's where it, it has to happen, and I had to learn that for myself. 
and, and I'm still learning it in my career and I love my career and I try to balance that out and try to uh, implement or show, look, I, I love this career, I love you just as much, but it, I, I kind of come as a package and I hope you can understand that that one doesn't outweigh the other. You come as a package and I need you for me to get to that next level. Wow. So that's the main thing I always concentrate on. And we've had our, you know, battles about it. And after, and after, you know, after a few times, like I'm basically, I've been married about 18 years and I've been divorced for about 14 of them. So I was like, I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> oh God. I'm like, shit, I'm leaving. I'm out of here. I'm like, wait a minute. She making most of the money. Hold on. Okay. Let's talk about it. Okay. I said some things that me gone overboard. I apologize. First of all, first and foremost, let me let me look at myself. What you want me to do? You want a foot roll, baby? You want me to do some dinner? <laughs> so, it takes it takes it takes a minute, man. It takes a minute, and it, but it takes. I, I just heard on the show, uh, another show. You know, it takes vulnerability, which I'm still learning. You know, to be vulnerable, to be open, and which is funny coming from an actor, which is that's our main thing. You got to be vulnerable. Yeah. Here I am, like you can't be vulnerable because on stage, as a comedian, you're showing one side of yourself. But the thing that makes, again, going back to Richard Pryor, Red Fox, and uh, I mean, excuse me, and Chappelle, and even Robin Williams and Jack Lee, they were vulnerable. You could relate to them. You know, that's why you're like, yeah, I feel the same way. And what they're saying isn't malicious. It's what they feel. And, and but they're always trying to understand. They're saying they're not perfect, which nobody is in this world, especially comics and actors. We're not perfect which is why we take on roles, which would be either comedic or dramatic, in trying to take on roles to understand ourselves along with the, along with the character that we're playing. So it's, it's a lot, man. It's a, like I said, even with the kids, Ooh. I try, like I said, I, I'm a different person with, with you here than I am with my kids. I'm, I'm a military man. I'm like, sit your ass down. You think I'm playing with you? Yeah. You think I'm messing with you? Uh huh. I'm gonna bust your ass. And I'm, hey, how you doing? And then I'm back to being daddy because I can't be funny with them all the time because I have to be Stop. dad. Yeah. You know, I have to be pops. I have to make sure their homework is done, especially with this, you know, online learning, which is kicking my ass. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't lying. I mean, shit. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm looking at it like, daddy, can you help me? I'm like, ah. <laughs> Ooh, ah. Okay, my check, my check, my check. Ah, preposition. Yeah, I think that was a that used to be a famous song from Bobby Brown. My preposition. I believe that was uh, the, oh, that's not it. Ah. Oh, that's, why don't we go back to coloring, son? Why don't we go back to coloring? Let's go back to coloring. Make sure you stay inside the lines. So, uh, that's what. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god that, oh. Uh, even in that like g the vulnerability I feel like a lot of times people are are able to understand that in um, in work going back to your point about being vulnerable in work but pulling that into personal like life how, how do you use I, I guess in parenting and, and the relationship, like how how did you realize that you needed to be more vulnerable in those areas? Well, actually, I'm I'm still learning. Mm -hmm. I'm always learning, and it was funny because uh, my eight year old, he comes to me and goes, uh, "Dad, I like to speak to you." That's how he talks. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> yeah, like, ah, formal? Like, what? It's very important, <laughs> father. I'm glad oh, but... we had a chance to sit down and speak this way. He goes, Dad, um, cause, and I, and I, and the thing about it is kids, because I, I, mean, I have four children. I have four children. And the youngest one, uh, as, along with the oldest one, are very in tune with their feelings. And the youngest one tell, told me, because, I, like I said, we're doing the learning thing, and I got impatient, and I called him a dummy, which was wrong. And he goes, uh, Daddy, uh, you called me a dummy, and that hurt my feelings. That really hurt my feelings. And at first, like, get your bitch ass out of here. Talk about you. That was the initial thought in my yeah, head. But, yeah. and I said that, and not in so many words. But then I was like, mom, no. Nah. And his, his mom said, look, he's sharing with you. He wants to talk to you. And that was where I was like, okay, this is where I need to be vulnerable. And I can't do the exact same thing my parent or my father did with me. Yeah. Because 
he was just mimicking what his dad with him, which was shut up, dummy, smack you in the back of the head and smack you and spank you, get me that switch or throw a shoe at you. That's how they raised us. And they yeah, figured, right. oh, you know, and I feed you, I clothe you, I got a roof over your head. That's enough. But that's not how, that doesn't mean that it was right. Right. So right. That's why I said I have to be more vulnerable, be open, because not in being more open and, and relating more to your kid makes a better relationship with your children. Right. And that's what I was learning. And when he came to me and he initiated the, the, the conversation, it touched me. And I said, OK, if he's taking this much time to share at eight years old yeah. how he was feeling, I should be more receptive because I always told him, you don't have to give me respect because I'm your father. I have to earn that. Just because I'm your father doesn't mean, oh, you respect me automatically. Right. If I haven't earned that respect, just like any other, other adult, if they don't respect you, there's no reason why you should respect them just because they say, well, I'm older and that's it. That doesn't garner you any respect. Well, I'm older. Shut your mouth. You know, that, that doesn't make any sense. That's how I feel. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that, it doesn't garner that. So he garnered my respect by coming to me and sharing with me. And I wanted to garner his respect by saying, you know what? I'll make a deal with you. I won't do that. I apologize. Doesn't matter if they're how old they young they are. You still can apologize to a young kid. Man. Because they right. need to understand that they'll be able to come to you. And hopefully, as they grow as human beings, that it's all right for men to say, yo, my bad. I'm sorry. Right. Not to be like, let me get the fuck out of here. You know, it's all good. Come on. No, you have to say I'm sorry because they want, you know, they need to feel that. They need to hear that. Yes, yes. What, what you're agree. saying is infinitely important. That's, you know, granted, you're not the same age as my dad. God rest him, his soul in heaven. That's how my dad raised me. Um, I just talked about this on my last episode. Like, that's exactly like he sat me down. He had conversations with me. Um, he taught me how. That's why I'm so good at this. Like, I'm, I've been mm. talking all my life. I want, And he taught me to explain myself. Like, I could have straight A's. And this was N64 was out. Love Nintendo 64. If I want that new game, okay, tell me why I should buy you this game. I'm like, right. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> right I wasn't now. prepared. You know, yeah. Yeah, exactly. I come back with bullet points, Dad. I mean, right. that's my son did. My son, uh, my oldest son, uh, 17, uh, he would ask me for a dog. I mean, this was for, I mean, he's 17 now, but he's been asking me for a dog for like, since he was 9, 10. And I was like, no, you ain't getting no dog. Why are you going to get a dog? And I was like, you're not going to clean up after it. You're not going to do this because I'm going to be raising that dog. No, yeah. you're not going to do it. So fast forward, he's, he wrote up literally a bullet point, like a, a PowerPoint presentation. <laughs> he's like, that. I'll show you why we want a dog. And this was during the pandemic. <laughs> Number one. And he went through it, the whole thing. And I said, you know what? If you go through this whole thing to explain to me why we should have and need a dog, damn it. I should be open enough and receptive enough to say, yeah, let's go get a dog. You you put in the work. You put in the work. I should be rewarding you for doing this work. So that just, that gave me, I was like, yeah, man, let me, let's let's do it. Let's do it. You broke me down. And that was more impressive. I, like, you broke me down. I, maybe I'm tired. I just woke up. I just, I don't feel like dealing with this shit. I, I haven't had my, my, my juice smoothie with protein. I'm, I'm fine. Let's do this. But it was what impressive. What did you get? No. Oh, what we got a pit. We got a pit. We got a pit terrier. He got oh. in, and yeah, he found he found her um, at the LA uh, shelter. Yes, uh, adopt yeah. those shop. Yes, he did. He adopted. <laughs> said, he pulled her up. He did the printout. We went there. He, he scheduled the uh, the time we were supposed to meet. They brought the dog out. Wow. He did all of that. He wow. did all. Yeah, and the so. dog's name, I'm uh, clearly I'm a pet lover. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, ZZ. Her name is ZZ. ZZ. Yeah, it was Zara, uh -huh. but we, we call her ZZ. ZZ. So, I yeah. Love so. <laughs> what happens is, just like I said, he ain't picking up shit. I'm walking the dog. <laughs> uh, morning and night, uh, I'm feeding the dog. Yeah. So everything that I said when he was 10 years old came to fruition. Yeah. So. <laughs> But right now, I'm I'm in love with that dog. So I say, oh, fuck it. Right, it's done. It's, it's it was done. for it's you done. all along. It was. It was for me all along. I got me because I love to run. That's so why I got a running partner now. So I I'm saw good. that. I saw yeah. that. So yeah. about, uh, you run as well, uh, Rob, right? <clears throat> I would define mine as a brisk walk. 
<laughs> oh, you you walk. So I started the pandemic running. I, I went to school on track scholarship, but um, do you run in the winter? I'm trying to get advice on that because I'm really yeah, about that. not. I don't to run it in my soul to run in the winter, but do you run in the winter? Okay. Uh, well, luckily not because I live in Los Angeles. Yeah, you don't get it. I have run in the rain. I have run in the rain. There was one time where um, I, I, I run marathons, like like 10Ks. Oh, you see My first marathon, I run in Long Beach. Yeah, I did 10Ks, which is six miles. I've run half marathons. And for some reason, we did um, one on the beach. And this day, it was raining. The wind was coming in sideways. And I'm thinking about, well, they're going to they gonna, they gonna cancel this race, right? They're going <laughs> to <laughs> cancel, right? It's about, and the person's like, all right, on your marks. We're like, no, no, you don't. Mark, go home, right? We're going to cancel. It. And go. And we ran in the cold. And it takes a, a different kind of mentality. I was like, okay, I'm cold. My hands are freezing. But people running like... <laughs> And they were just going into it. I'm like, oh, okay. And that's what made me love them. Like, okay, it's a mentality. It's it's it's, it's a discipline that you have to have. And and then from that point on, I was just into it because I saw all these people pushing themselves, pushing their bodies to doing things that they weren't, that their bodies, I know physically we shouldn't have been out there. But they said, no, we're going to do this. We're going to finish this. And we weren't doing it for a medal. Or, I mean, people, some people were running for time. Some people were just doing it for camaraderie. But they were just running and they were just doing it and pushing other people. And it's almost like what kind of like, I guess, why I like sports and that so much is like the uh, time back into entertainment. It's like you have to push yourself, okay. know your limits, test your limits, push those limits, see how far you can go. And that's what I do. Man. And yeah, I mean, sometimes I'm like, this is stupid. Why am I doing my feet hurt? I'm tired. I'm, oh, my God. Oh, things are starting to flop out. My, I got my drawers out. I got a wedgie. I want to take this. I'm going to go to the bathroom. You got all this, but you that's just, can, yeah, you just doing what you have to do. And it, it, it's just, it's meditative for me, too, when I run. It's meditative because then when I finish running, I have all these ideas, flood of ideas, because, you know, they talk about the endorphins and all yeah. that starts happening. And I start having these ideas and I'm like, oh, let me write this down. Oh, I should do this. I do this. It's, it's my, I don't drink coffee. So that's my morning coffee. Mm -hmm. I'll run. You know, I just get it, get it, whether it be 20 minutes or 40 minutes or however long I feel like running. At that day, it's just my, uh, my adrenaline rush. And then I'm ready to go for the day. But yeah, I got my dog. She run with me. Now, the first time I ran with her, uh, it, it happened to be like one of those mini heat waves. It was like, and we went running at eight o'clock in the morning. And at that time, it was 85 degrees at 8 o'clock in the morning. And I was like, oof, it's kind of hot. But we, I ran with her. This was like our third day with her. I'm like, come on, girl. We're going to do this. We're going to do this. And, it, and, we got, and the sun started coming out. And her little tongue. <laughs> then, now, I know if she could have talked, she like, nigga, slow down. That's what she wanted to say. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, I ain't no track dog. I'm a pit. I, I, I fight. I don't run. I ain't no great <laughs> If you want one, get a greyhound. That's a motherfucker that room. I'm a damn pit terrier. I got too much fun. And then after a while, she just laid down. She's like, fuck it. She just laid down. She yep. said, fuck it. I ain't running no more. <laughs> like, oh, girl, I'm so sorry. We were on a trail. I had to call my wife to come pick us up. She like, <laughs> and then, you know what he did? I like, he looked at me. If I was so I'd bite your ass if I was so tired. I was just, I can't breathe right now. I was like, oh, shit. Give me some water. So it was, it was, that's how much I love it, man. But she's getting used to it now. She's getting used to it now. We're, yeah, we're starting to do a mile, two miles. We'll do a walk, run, walk, run. Um, she's getting used to it, but that's my running partner. That's my girl. And, um, yeah, it's, that's, and like you just said, with the pandemic and, hey, I, I can run two marathons at this point. I'm serious. I've been running so much time because I train my little boys because they play soccer and basketball. And so I was like, you ain't going to be playing Fortnite all day and getting Fortnite ass. Sitting on your ass, <laughs> you know, saying, oh, my God, I'm laggy. You ain't getting no Fortnite ass on me and playing, you know, <laughs> bra hollering and all this shit. We're going to do some exercise. Yes, you know, that's important. You know, get, get out there and let's, let's do some work. So I've been working with them, uh, working out and just really, you know, staying in shape and just having fun. And plus, like, I'm an actor. So, you know, my this is my moneymaker right here. It I got to keep everything tight. <laughs> I can't become... 
you know, I can't have that quarantine look like hey, you couldn't find one barber, not one. I'm like, yeah, nah, just uh, you don't got no clippers at the house, nothing, nothing, really, damn. Uh, so I just want to make sure that I was looking tight. So that's the main thing that I, I, I wanted to push. But yeah, it's always for me, it's always about pushing limits, it's always about testing your limits, see how far you can go, and uh, whether it be comedy, run, exercise, something, anything, it's always. I mean, my, my lady always talked about my, that's my ADHD talking, but maybe that is because I'm always wanting to find some activity. I always want to find some kind of, uh, uh, I guess, an adrenaline rush, something to pique my senses. You're creative. You know? mm, you're creative. Always, creative, always think it's creative. And even my son said, Dad, why don't we do, we do a sketch? And I, I, I perked up. I'm like, oh, shit, let me start writing. Yeah. You know, and he just wants to make it fun because he sees these YouTube sketch sketches. I'm like, son, we could do that. I'm like, yeah, let's do that. <laughs> Yeah, I'm like, yeah, you're watching these motherfuckers do all this crap. We could do the same thing. I got a camera. You know, I got, we'll put some stuff. I'll, I'll direct you. And now he's like, which is a good thing. He's bugging me. Dad, when are we going to do this next sketch? Because we did a sketch. Oh, about cool. Playing. And, and he got a lot of views. And his, <laughs> his grandpa, you know, called. And my father called. And other people saying how great it was. And he got the bug. So I was like, all right, here oh, we go. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, so it's fun. No, it's a lot of fun. So, yeah, he's 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 feeling. He's getting the bug, and we're starting to write some stuff up. And we're actually gonna like after I come home from uh, work from the Netflix show, we're gonna shoot that sketch. Like I'm gonna write something up for us, and then we're gonna and I'm gonna show him how to edit it and put it up. And, Excellent. And, yeah, yeah. And in the next generation like, building. Yes. yes. Yeah. And like I said, hey, if I don't like if he makes it, well, he won't make it because I'm gonna sabotage his career because you ain't making it before me. Man. No, <laughs> that ain't gonna happen. I'm gonna get my star on the walk of fame. No, fuck that. I'm sorry. If it sounds petty, yes, I am petty. That's it's terrible. I, I told you I'm working on stuff for myself. I'm working on myself. You you did tell us you warned us about that. And where can we find uh the YouTube clip? Oh my son! Oh my God! Uh, I will share that with Rob. I will put that okay. on. Okay. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I have it. And I have it too. So I'll save that with you guys. I'll share that with you. All right. Um, I only got a couple more questions. Uh, Jess, you got anything else? Before I, I, I don't. I only got a couple more questions. I know you're a family man. I don't want to get you in trouble with the misses. Um, uh, <laughs> won't be the first time. Don't worry about it, man. I don't <laughs> get in trouble. Yeah. I'm used um, to it. <laughs> Two things. Um, your podcast. Tell us about your podcast. You have a podcast. I have a podcast called Balls in Your Face. Uh, <laughs> it, it's a it's a sports uh, uh, slash uh, comedy slash culture podcast where uh, we talk about we're sports fanatics. We talk about what's going on in the sports world. We talk about what's culture. We had uh, we just finished talking about um, the whole Ice Cube. Um, I guess quote unquote controversy with him. I need uh, to read that. Yeah, meeting with Trump, uh, be, based on his uh, his uh, black agenda, and Trump uh, um, uh, calling or uh, reaching out to him, and uh, and Ice Cube accepting that uh, that request, and we went back and forth why we agree, why we disagree. So we talked about that. Uh, we've talked about uh, you know LeBron. We're we're LeBron James fan when LeBron finally won his ring. And we talked about the LeBron haters and the LeBron lovers. Yeah. Uh, we talked about Dr. Dre and uh, the divorce with his wife and how uh, someone needs uh, $2 million for a hairdresser or whatever the hell she needs. <laughs> I don't know what fucking kind of hair you need $2 million to fix your hair. I mean, damn. I mean, uh, <laughs> he said, I mean, damn. Some, I mean, come on. So we talk about that. So we call it balls in your face because like anything else, when you get a ball in your face, it kind of wakes you up with the truth. So we just, and, and we and we love sports, but it's centered around sports fanatic because so we're going to talk about the big three that Ice Cube talked about as well that he has. Yeah. So we, we, we pretty much cover the whole gambit. It's open. It started off as a sports talk show, sports comedy talk show. We talk about comedy and our comedy stories, but we try to uh, encompass everything. You know, anything that we want to talk about, what we have, what I write in my notes, hey, we got to talk about this. We definitely got to hit that. And we're looking to uh, have that. We're, uh, we have our producer, Warren Thompson. He's editing right now. And you could look up that on, on not only on YouTube, iTunes, and we're looking to uh, put it on Amazon, which has a new streaming service. So we're trying to do as many media platforms out there 
just to get the word out there. And just like for like I said, with this pandemic, with this pandemic for me, what it's done for me is it either could do one thing, it could crush you or make you more creative. Yeah. And I've chose to make it more creative. At first I was depressed as hell. I gotta be with these kids and you know, and I because I, I, there was a time I was like, I, I really don't like these kids. I really don't like them. I, I really want to leave right now. But then after the two, three weeks of talking to myself off the ledge, it taught me how to be creative and really appreciate who they were as people. And, and then also dig down deep and find some creative side of me, which is why I did the podcast. And also I did a web series. Um, it's a few years ago called All for Love, which was based on my relationship. With my wife, she's South Asian and, um, and she, how we, um, met, but it's loosely based on that with us dating. You can find that on Amazon as well. Um, and we're pitching that also to try to make it hopefully to something, a series, uh, and, uh, and flesh that out hopefully with Netflix or Amazon or any other, uh, streaming platforms. So, um, yeah, that's what we're doing right now. That's, we're just always constantly just moving the needle, trying to, um, uh, add to our portfolio, add to our resume. So, awesome! Yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, I know. It was long winded that, but that's that's what I wanted to to, to to share with that with the podcast and with the Upshaws and things, and it just doesn't stop there. But like I said before, with this pandemic, um, it was a, uh, as I like to call it, God's global timeout. Yeah, where you, know, you need to sit your ass down and right. really see what's um important yeah and, and i'm glad you touched on that because i actually i said no i didn't have anything but that I was you had my one. question it <laughs> was it was like i wanted to know your experience of the pandemic and like i got it without asking so the universe oh. provided my I, I manifested it in my thoughts there so. you go. yeah you <laughs> manifest your thought and then yeah, I, put I wrote it, it down it literally says pandemic and experiences and then you gave it to me so it's been a, yeah it's been a blessing i, I mean <laughs> it, I, mean, I mean i understand uh, the whole with you know the dark side of it which is the unemployment and the deaths and things like and of that nature and that is horrible mm -hmm. uh, um and you know i'm not gonna get political because i think we've all done that and i'm tired of that myself right and so on the flip side of that i look at it as like i said i've had enough time to spend with my kids to really understand what was going on, not only in schooling and in their life, to have conversations. And yeah, I have my down times and my up time, up, my down days and my up days. But how do I cope with that? Like I said, it forced me to, you know, in turn, uh, look, in, look deeper, okay? Mm -hmm. What can I make better of myself? What have I been neglecting? You know, asking the questions yes. that, yep. because you're always on the move, you don't really right. have time to really sit down with yourself, <laughs> with yourself. Since you remember when old folks like sit your ass still, sit still, yeah. right? Yep. And before you like, well, what? I said sit still. They just want right. you to sit down and relax your mind and think and somewhat meditate. But they right. just sit still, and that's what it forces you to do: to sit still and somewhat meditate. Even if you're not, you know, quote unquote, you know, the typical meditation, but you get to think about, oh, I missed this opportunity, but this opportunity presents itself. What does this sign say? Oh, I'm exercising. Maybe because after a while, like I've been exercising, and then one kid said, to, "Hey, can I work out with you?" And another kid said, "Can I work out with you?" Then I had these little kids I'm working out with out of nowhere, and I get a little business on the side, and, and that's just because I, I like, I didn't know this was gonna happen. I just like, you know, working out with my kids. Also, it was for my 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 actual boys to stop complaining so damn much. So I was like, here, have your friends complain with you know, work out with your ass, so you stop complaining, so I'm gonna slap your ass until next week. So it just spun out into that. So things like that, that's what the pandemic has done during this time is just make you think outside of the box. And I've talked to my, my boys from college, from Howard. They said it makes you think outside of the box. He's wrote scripts and, you know, we watch things differently and yeah. we, you know, we, we take in things different. And I don't take things um, as personal as I used to. Right. Now I just, instead of, and I have to credit my therapist and also what I've been thinking also, I, instead of going into something, expecting a result, mm -hmm. you know, I just expect them to just listen and that's it. Right. Mm -hmm. Don't expect anything at the end of it. That's Don't expect a result. Just, you know, put it out there. And if something positive happens, great. If nothing doesn't happen, fine. But you have to be okay with that. So that's what this pandemic has, has opened up for me. Whew. 
Man. Thank you for shining a light on mental oh. health too in the black community because I am an advocate for that. I go to therapy uh, and I think that a lot of people are apprehensive about that or, or what that looks like. So just hearing you openly speak, I really want to like say something there because I think that we need more that um, we have a lot of trauma. And so thank you for sharing that. Oh, I, I complete. I, I was one of the, the naysayers, mm -hmm. the, the, the people that say, man, yeah, that's crazy. That's why you take a therapy. Shit, you know. But after a while, um, and, and I have to credit my daughter, mm -hmm. who kept saying, Dad, you need therapy. Oh, and I thought wow. she was really funny. Yeah, she was, yeah, because she, she, uh, she does therapy. Wow. And she said, Dad, you need therapy. It's, it'll help, Dad. It'll help. It'll help. And she said this for about a year or two. Mm -hmm. And then after a while, you know, because I, my temper was uh, not constructive. It was destructive. Mm -hmm. And then I said, okay, you know, all right, baby, I'll, I'm going to do therapy. And and like I said, you could, you could tell jokes, but for so long when yeah. shit ain't funny anymore. Now now I'm not being funny. I'm just being angry. Right. And uh, and when you're being angry, it's not funny anymore and you're not being vulnerable. And then it right. stifles the creativity. It's a, a domino effect in it's some ways effect. of how it robs robs us of our lives. Just one little thing spins out of control in... I, I, I don't know. Yeah, no, no, you're right. No, you're <laughs> on the right path. It does spin out of control. And it's like this because you don't, it's like pulling a thread. You know, you, you mm -hmm. pull that thread, oh, oh, this thread, oh, this will, uh, after I pull this thread, it'll be fine. But then you keep pulling it and it just keeps unwinding. Right, yep. right. Rapping. Like, uh, this not getting any better. Right. You're just getting to the root of the issue. Right. And that's where my journey is. I'm trying to get to the root of the issue. Right. Whether, like I said, prayerful, like I'm a, uh, I like to say I'm a spiritual person, not a religious person, because right. religion right. is a little more constricting for me. Spiritual, right. I'm a little more open, which is why I read the Bible and try not to take it verbatim because I have to understand the times that it was written. But it right. does have some good nuggets in there where I can say, oh, I never thought of something that way. Mm -hmm. And maybe if I apply it in this way, maybe that will get me closer to what nirvana is, whatever the hell it is, you know? Right. It's always, it's, it's always, like I said, I, I've never, I've never thought in my forties that I would still be learning, but Hey, uh, I'm I off. found that we're learning to unlearn. Yeah. <laughs> like, so exactly. you, exactly. you, it's a yeah. whole, you thought you checked, we were going through this process of checking the boxes, checking the boxes. So you thought you would get to the end of the checklist. And I think as you become whole and be, and you're working on being more whole, you find that you're unlearning these processes. Like, no, this doesn't just equal that. Like you have to look at the situation as it is and all in its fullest context, not right. just, just check. <laughs> so yeah, exactly. And I've, and I've been, and it's, it does, it has helped my relationship, honestly, great, with great. my, you know, my lady and my, and my, and my kids. Um, like I said, always learning. I didn't say I'm perfect because it's, it's a long, like you said, you have to unlearn. That's, that's 40 some odd years of unlearning, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. because there was one way that I would express my feelings, but either clamming up and just pushing it down. Cause you know, being, you know, being mm -hmm. a man, especially a black man, push it down, push it down, yeah. push it right. down, you get ulcers and mm, mm, do you yep. shitting out stones <laughs> and you know, having all kinds of, you know, yes. intestinal you know, ulcers and, and, and all these uh, uh, problems like high blood pressure and diabetes, that's where it comes from. It's all that stress and all yeah. that anger and angst. But once you release it, oh, you know, there's a breath to it, you know, and it's it just opens up so much. And for me, and then we, the universe opens up. And my, my daughter used to say this all the time. The universe will open up so many possibilities. Oh, yeah. yeah. Once you allow once yourself. Once let go. Once you let go. Got to. Yeah. And damn it. Hey, she was right. And she How old is your daughter? Uh, she is 26. Yeah. I was 26 year old baby. You know, even though I call her my baby, yeah, 26. Yeah. So No, no. It's great information. Great. Yeah, great, she's great. wise beyond her ears, but years. But uh there. Yeah. And it, like I said, always learning, whether it be comedy, life, exercise, is never too late. I'm always reading and I've Read more than I have ever have in college. Oh yeah, same. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. Same. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm reading stuff back to front. I'm like, wow, okay. 
taking little nuggets here and there and just trying to apply to it and just build on that. So that's where I'm at. It's yes, awesome. you're, you're setting such a, a great example for your kids. And I'm so glad that you recognize and you took the time to listen and say, you know, what, I do need therapy. And based off of just um, some of the stories you're telling and the way you interact with your kids, you're not taking those things that happened to you or whatever happened or whatever the root is. You're not taking it out on your family or you're trying not to take it out on your family. You're like, let me get, you know, this is not this is something not right about this. Let me fix this because they didn't do anything to me. You know, so it's kind of like that whole unlearning thing. Cause yeah, my dad was like that sometimes, I'd smack you upside the head. But you know, he <laughs> yeah. he, he he dialed it back. But um, last question I have for you, man. Yes, sir. Um, this is a loaded question. Where do you see this thing going? I mean, you have a lot on the horizon. You're well seasoned. I would say that you're established. You know, five, ten years from now, what is the big goal? What is the big plan? You know, I stopped doing that, honestly, um, because when I didn't reach that goal, I got frustrated and angry. Mm -hmm. So I just, uh, they have this thing in acting called live in the moment. Mm -hmm. I just live in the moment, brother. I just really, because I, I try not to, I try not to etch my uh, path in stone. I write it in pencil because it's always changing. I just keep erasing that bitch. I just, I, I just keep her like, nope, that ain't gonna work. Nope, that ain't going because it's just, it's, um, it's ongoing. I'm always evolving. And so when I, when I, when they say, you know, where these, I mean, I have in my mind somewhere, written down all oh, in five years. Because I remember when I came out to LA, I said, oh man, when I come out to LA, I'm gonna be a leading man, leading man. <laughs> After five, ten, five, six years. You know what? I'll be a supporting man. I'll be a supporting man. <laughs> you know? But as long as I'm a man, I'm a supporting. And after like eight, nine, ten, eleven years, like guest star is fine. I could guest star somewhere. I could be a guest star. <laughs> guest star. I'm good. I'm good with that. After 18, 19 years, 20 years, I'm like, you know what? I, I, I just want to work. I just, I, I, <laughs> if I could just, I just be in a catering. If I could just hand someone some muffin or something. Um, that's, that's, that's how it is, brother. It just, you just don't put all these, when you put, I mean, I, putting expectations is not bad. Expectations yeah. are good. It's just don't put restraints on those expectations, like time frames. Yeah. Because when it happens, it happens. And just always enjoy because the journey is always more enjoyable than the destination sometimes. Mm -hmm. You know, and I'm, that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to enjoy the journey. And it's been a long ass journey. Don't get me wrong. I like to get to that destination and there's been many successes along the way. But at the same time, I have to make sure that I enjoy the journey and that I don't try to put restraints on, you know, what I gauge as success. Because yeah. for me, success, it, it, it changes from day to day with me. Yeah. You know, it may be monetary then it may be uh spiritual then it may be just right family life i mean there's many successes that people look at and i think that's what sometimes um uh, and including myself uh was a downfall because i put okay if i do this and i make this that's when i'm a success and when that didn't happen i get frustrated i get angry i get depressed i was at my lowest i don't want to live i mean it was crazy stuff going through my head and then after a while I'm like I gotta stop doing this to myself yeah because it's not healthy so when I do get a job like the Upshaws or Bernie Mac or everybody's Chris I'm like thank you thank you God yes. because a lot of other folks would love to have this job they and would. even if it wasn't the leading man or the supporting recurrent whatever I'm on a show I'm doing what I love it's not work and it's going to a journey and, and it's going to some place where I don't know where it's leading me to but that's the fun part about it. Yes. Yeah, that's you, the best part about it. Because, you just hit it. Yeah. You it's, just, it's just beautiful. You you just hit it, man. Um, I'm I'm so glad you answered the way that you answered. I used to be the the whole numbers, I have to do this, that, and the third. And like you said, it's disappointing as shit when you don't reach it, especially mm. when all your other friends are doing it. Oh, <laughs> that's cool. Yeah, when I, when I see like most of my friends, like, yes, and it yes, starts out, yes. oh, he got that show. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. 
I am so happy. I'm biting a hole through my lip blood. Yeah. Dripping down. <laughs> Woo. And then I got that glory tear from Denzel Washington yeah. in that old movie. Because, <laughs> yeah, I'm so happy. I am so happy for him. Meanwhile, I'm just, oh, my God, it's tearing me apart. But now I'm genuinely happy when I see one of my peers do something. Yeah, you know, yeah. I'm genuinely happy. I'm like, God, ah, that's what I'll, I'll email them or message. Hey, man, I am so proud that you did this. I'm so proud, man. Keep doing your thing. I don't. I mean, and before you used to be an agenda behind it, but now I'm like, no, I'm literally proud. I'm happy for you, you know, because I know how hard it is to get there. Right. I understand yeah. the sacrifice right. you probably have to make. You yes. know, right. not having a relationship. But, you know, the, uh, the, uh, not hanging out with your friends. You know, getting whatever it knows. I know what it's like. Yep. Right. So I understand how hard that journey is. So for 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 you to get that, I understand what it took. Yep. So I'm able to, uh, you know, empathize and, and understand that. So it's actually so refreshing. I'm like, I'm so happy to see. It. I mean, at the point where you know I'm crying with the dude. Yeah, oh, man, we did it, dude. I'm, we didn't do shit. I didn't do nothing. <laughs> baby. Yeah, man, we did it. Like, all right, man, I gotta go back to my trailer. Okay, well, I gotta go help out my son. This online math, this core math, kicking my ass. I, I'll see you later, man. You know, it's a beautiful thing, brother. No, it's a. Uh, it is. It, it, it it's is. a beautiful thing, and I, I understand. I understand what needs to be. You know, what's important, and uh, and like that's why I said I don't really have any um, expectations. I guess I'm just enjoying the journey. Um, you know, if money, you know, start raining from the heavens or success comes out, I am appreciative because I know what it was like to, I guess, fail yeah. and yeah. at times feel like a failure. Mm -hmm. And so anytime I get anything little, it's just a blessing and I count those blessings. And when people say, you know, you know, something like, what's your best role? What's the most exciting? Like you just asked me. It's like uh, that, but the next one is going to be my most exciting one. Right. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, these things are far and few between. So I take it in stride, man. I'm just enjoying the ride. I'm just enjoying the, the journey. Um, and then if I'm able to help out my fellow man, woman, child, whatever, I, I will do that because uh, I understand um, the, the, the blessing that I was given. And it's my opportunity and my duty now to to share that with them, to share that with whomever, and to just bring them up, and hopefully they pay it forward. Yes, yes, I'm over here like smiling. My my jaws hurt because I'm just like, <laughs> yo, my face <laughs> yes, is hurting this is right now. Goal. This is what people need to take away. Like, it is really important to like I think self discovery, and it all goes back to that. When you dig into yourself, the abundance is within ourselves. Like, yeah. if we can. Because once you realize it is a journey and it is hard, and if it's hard for me, it's hard for them. And you you find happiness in other people's stories. You find yeah. like uh, that connection, and like I think that all of those little pieces like is where the success really comes from. Because you you're you're experiencing it and feeling it and participating it in it in such a deeper level. So. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm like, cheese. Yeah. <laughs> hey, you know, I didn't mean to go all uh, Cleflo Dollar or, you know. Uh, <laughs> talk, you know, you know. My you face think, hurt, I, man. I, I think I went to Oprah's, uh, you know, Soulful Sunday. I know right, I, I, I felt like Dale King up in here. Soulful Sunday on us, but I appreciated it. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, I, it just, it, this was great. I, 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 I just feel like, um, <laughs> <laughs> going through all what we're going through, you know, it's it's time to just sit back, reflect, and say thank you, and um, hopefully better things to come. And like I said, like I never put restraints on yourself. Never put, I don't put, I have expectations, but I don't have restraints. So, and if it doesn't go this, the way you plan for it to go, it's okay. That's okay. It's okay. You know, because there's something better. And if something does, doesn't, does, uh, I guess, go in a, opposite direction that you plan that is not what you planned mm -hmm. lean uh, someone said something to effective lean into the uncertainty of it all 
Mm-hmm. You gotta Ooh, low. It's okay to do that. It's yeah. scary. It's like skydiving. It is scary. So you jump. It's scary as hell. You jump in. You got a dude strapped to your back. Girl strapped to your back. You don't know. Is that chute going to open? I hope it does. But you just got to <laughs> jump into faith and make it happen. You know. Well, Mike, thank you so much for taking time out to speak with us and sharing that very useful, helpful, and um, powerful knowledge with the audience, man. That That's what it's all about on this show, man. We want to promote positivity. We want people to share their life experiences with others because that next great comedian that is trying to come in behind you, you might have just gave them or her exactly what they just needed to make it to that next step. So definitely want to thank you for that. Any other shout outs you want to do, your social medias, all of that? Yeah, sure. Uh, I like, uh, I'm on uh, IG, uh, Mike Estimate Comic, uh, one word. Uh, I'm also uh, on uh, Facebook, Wanted Funny Haitian Dude. So you can check out some stuff there. Uh, <laughs> also, like we, we talked about the Balls in Your Face podcast that will be coming out soon. Um, also, um, you can check out the web series, Off of Love, and look at some stuff. It's some early stuff. Not the best, but it's funny. I think it's funny. On Amazon Prime, um, and uh, that's pretty much. Uh, oh, and uh, Twitter at m e s t i m e forty two. That's me time forty two, and uh, yeah, that's the only time you could uh, quote me as Jewish. Me time, me time. All right, you yeah. gotta go before you get us canceled. Before we even get on air. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Hey, I'm I'm on the come up, okay? I'm trying to take that thing away. So you uh, yeah, I don't want the ACLU coming down on you. Uh, my fault. That's, I don't want I don't want that happening. But yeah, that's that, those are the social media platforms. So that's pretty much it. But I thank you, Rob. Thank you, Jessica, for uh, taking the time out. This was awesome. This thank was great. you thank you so much. No it's problem, good. man. No that's problem. Sweet. And, uh, to our audience, I already know, um, if you're a first time listener, you can find us on Instagram, FME underscore podcast on Facebook, join the Facebook group. We have great discussions going on in there. Just search us from my experience podcast. You can like the page as well. Cause that's going to come up too, but, uh, definitely join the Facebook group. Uh, if you have a question, if you want to be a guest or you have someone you want to suggest as a guest, hit us up, fmepodcast1 at gmail.com. Don't forget to check our affiliate links in the description. I'm not going to go through all that stuff right now. I- I'm-, I'm still on the high from this conversation. Now I'm processing some things. I feel like I need to stay up and work, but I actually got to get up and go to work, so I can't. But, <laughs> yeah. um, and uh, you can follow my personal IG, complete underscore vision. Jessica, where can they find you? At exposure, E X P O Z H E R, on Instagram and Facebook. All right, y'all. So, y'all already know take care of yourself physically, mentally, financially, and we will catch y'all next time. Peace. Bye. Bye.